All right, we will open the planning board meeting for April 26, 2022. Uh, this is being conducted in a hybrid manner pursuant to the general laws. Uh, we are recording it and we'll be posting it online, but anybody is free to recording, record it, you just need to let us know, anyone? Okay, uh, seven o'clock Tom Planner's report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, first uh, coordination item. I received a, a call from Farzan uh who runs AMZ Autos over at 797 College Highway. Um, that's a site that was permitted a number of years back. Joel Pilot, so I was the applicant. Um, and at the time, uh, the site plan was uh, submitted and and parking spaces were uh, allotted for the sales function out there. Uh, the site plan picks a uh, customer uh, and accessible, or I should say, he got a parking space and access out, out there. Um, the on site condition varies um, from uh, what uh, is seen on the site plan, given that uh, we'll say the targeted size uh, and market of automobile uh, is smaller than the standard 10 by 20 parking stall. And as you might uh, presume at a uh, used car sales facility, uh, they are parked it will, uh, closer together. Uh, so not that not everybody can go in and uh, just roll a car out that's usually for a staff person to bring it out into the air and move around, right? Is this the uh, way right by Cinderella's gas station there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sunny. Yes, oh, it is. Sunny, sunny, correct. Yeah. Um, so yes, yep, uh, right, right next door. So uh, President is looking at uh, eventually purchasing the property, wanting to uh, reach out and capture <coughs> of from a site level uh, expansion uh, for his vehicle capacity out there. I did meet uh, with him on site. Um, his request is uh, at 20 uh, vehicles uh, total of the property. It feels close to appropriate. There is some uh, small section of gravel uh, paving that's uh, along that drive aisle closer to College Highway that you looked at to figure out how the property's being managed. Um, and I thought I'd reach out to the board and see what uh, other used car facilities, how they've been managed uh, for some of the informal vehicle storage areas uh, in the past before we circle back to Barzan and, um, Try to give them some guidance. What's the proof for now? I'm sorry. How many, how many cars is approved for now? Ten. I think ten's under his license. Um, he wants to do how many? And ten under twenty. Suffice it to say, uh, when I when I met him on site, there were more than uh, ten vehicles. I was say, um, it looks pretty crowded. When you lined drive up. By yes. Yeah. Uh, and you know, under his operation, uh, he's mostly focusing on sedans and we'll call them small to mid-sized SUVs. Obviously it's a different consideration if we're looking at the capacity of the to do any pickup trucks um, or anything more substantial. So technically it's already in violation of And I, I advise them uh, as such. So his license is for 10? I, I, like I believe so. I haven't uh, looked at uh, but that's uh, what he uh, referenced. Oh, it'll be interesting to check the license. The site plan, and then he went in front of the select board to get the license for the actual number of vehicles, right? I don't know if the license. Usually, the select board asks for a site plan when they do the license, so it should fit. For the sake of discussion, that's. It was a site plan that was uh, developed for Mr. Phylax. And at the time he was contemplating you know, building a small, uh, maybe reconditioning mm -hmm. uh, facility out there for, if you will, sales vehicles only. Uh, so that was not constructed. And essentially we do have from the, the notice of the paid parking and this extending probably a bit further in line with the, um, if you will, this row of sales cars to those areas and also sweeping down at a certain degree on the other side. Um, so we do see that the area is identified as you know, sales parking area. Uh, if the planning board doesn't have um, any particular, I'm going to say, in 
well, what quantity fits within these areas, then it's up to him to modify and show to the board how uh, accessible parking and vehicle circulation can be accommodated within the- Do we uh, separate out there. customer parking from sales parking? Uh, yes, in only in what I'm you know, interpreting uh, from a number of years back, although I may recall this uh, plan quite well. Um, so that uh, we're looking specifically at what's the sales space uh, as related for the, for the building, uh, employees, and uh, then if you will, the, the sales area itself. Okay. I think I'm doing more lifting than I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> two, two customers <laughs> and a handicap up here, so that's all locked. Uh, three, cu this? three customers total, three spaces, I should say, total, and then they so forth, total of four spaces. So, far. so he has a special permit for the use. Yes. And has the site plan. The ad parking. Is there is there reference in the site in the special permit? I looked it up a number of weeks ago and I was trying to say could be say there hundred percent should be. I imagine it would be. So I think we just have to come in for a modification. Probably of both only because it's probably in the special permit. And so I'm not sure you're going to be able to do it just with the site plan. I came with tapes to it. I tend to think so as well. And then he came back. And then all right. All right. Or Mr. The discussion with the select board right beforehand. Uh, sure. Whoever turned it into ANZ. Yeah. That's right. Because this plan is from 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I raised that. Uh, you guys said like a year or two did on a modification year, to that. Yeah, a couple like years ago. 2021, years, just did one. It had become a vacant store. Have we got the new and approval? And then it reverted back it? to it? a small sale, yeah. auto oh, sales. Yeah. And just, this is not the most recent. No. no. There was something. No, no, no. That's, yeah. that's 10 years old. Oh when I was back back in like 2013 or 14, somewhere around there when I was on the board, they they came in and they changed it to a vape shop. Yep. And then and when then the governor had his big change and everything, they turned it after a that. modified sure. site plan to, and he wanted a higher number of cars. And we said, well, we think this not fits. And then I thought he went in front of the select board and the select board said, no, you can only have this many. I see. So I, this is not. <laughs> I will. Uh, most recent. I will so, coordinate with. Uh, but that is right. It is more history. right. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. Well done. Working. This is a, a good uh, opportunity to get some history and <laughs> raise this right now. Uh, moving on. I can uh, tell you about Johnny Appleseed. He comes from my hometown. If you're interested in history, I love we'll, this. We'll, we'll discuss it later. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, that's the gentleman from Bell Point Land and the company we got regarding Nunside Street Pasture Road. Uh, their work as due diligence and trying to establish what the uh, what records exist uh, for that property. Uh, there was probably a half dozen or so in our lots cut off parent parcel at one point in time, um, and then a subsequent NR recorded to <coughs> join them all as a single parcel uh, once again. So I referred them to conservation in regards to uh, stream uh, in the rear or west portion of the property. And we'll see if anything comes out of discussion. Uh, Mr. Bob Eckwood stopped in today. Uh, he and his family own land um, at Sodom Mountain in the well, one of the southwest corners of uh, of Southwick. He reached out regarding uh, feasibility for um, a solar array to be at the site. That site does lie within the AC zone. Uh, so I let him know that unless uh, either the bylaw or uh, zoning map uh, were to change, uh, that uh, on small scale systems were uh, permittable. Um, information that's come in. Since the last meeting, we did receive uh, correspondence from Jason Fiore uh, regarding the Greens West uh, subdivision. They are advancing matters uh, towards uh, street acceptance uh, for next year's uh, town meeting, unless uh, there's a special one that's uh, called prior to that point. Um, we have some correspondence. The request essentially is to put in place a bond for um, uh, we use the term, I think it's open bond, but to, for a punch list and other minor items. Uh, Mr. Brown did 
perform a cursory review of the uh, lunch list that's already in place. Saw that not quite all that it had been completed just yet. I shouldn't say not quite, not all of the items had been completed. So we'll keep that uh, on the radar. I'll keep you apprised of uh, developments on that. Um, and we did receive an application um, from Mr. Ken Eggleston for the wellhead special permit and several minor uh, requested modifications to the special permit at um, and site plan at 141 Road, uh, projected to be opened on May 24th. That's it. That's it. All right. 705 public comment. Anybody have anything for the board tonight that is not on the agenda? We'll start with people in person. Okay. Uh, anybody on Zoom? Okay. 715, 138 R Hillside Road. Finally. Definitive subdivision special permit site plan approval and stormwater management <coughs> permits. Um, um, so let's see. Chris, can you hear us? I sure can. Yep. All ready? We cannot hear him just yet. I Hold on, Chris. Um, Chris, how about now? Oh, I hear you. I hear you fine. Yeah. Right, and now, now we can hear you. Hear you. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. Here we go. Notice of public hearing. Tuesday, April 26, 7.15 p.m. via Zoom and in the land use hearing room, 454 College Highway. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provision of Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 81T, Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 11, and under Chapter 315 of the Town of Southwood Bylaws, that the Planning Board will hold a hybrid public hearing on Tuesday, April 26, 2022 at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom and in the land use hearing room. Town Hall at 454 College Highway South of Mass on an application by NK Realty LLP, uh, care of Nicholas Katsunakis for a definitive subdivision special permit, site plan approval, and stormwater management per permit for property located at 138R Hillside Road, <coughs> from R40. The property is shown on current assessor's map 37, parcel 20. Uh, Zoom information is given. The applicant proposes to create a seven lot flexible residential subdivision in accordance with the bylaws of the Town of Southwood, Chapter 183. Chapter 185, sections 9, 10, 13, 23, and Chapter 315. Copy of the application of the plans may be inspected by contacting the town planner uh, at his phone or email. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the application should appear at the time may designated by the majority chairperson of the planning board. Um, we will. Um, um, Jessica, you'll be designated. For this because there's a decent chance that I will not be here. So, um, um, all right. So, uh, Chris, if you want to just start with your presentation and then we'll go from there. Okay. Yep. I'm going to ask permission to um, share my screen as I go through this presentation. Yeah. That's me. Sorry, Chris, give me one second. I think I can do it. Let's try it now, Chris. Sharing the screen. Yeah. How about that? There we go. Yep. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Christopher Carney. I'm here on behalf of our Lebec Associates. Uh, on behalf of, uh, I'm here yeah, for Nicholas Kastanakis, uh, an NKP Realty uh, for this subdivision off Hillside Road. I work as a civil engineer and land surveyor over at Arlo Beck Associates. And as previously mentioned, uh, we're here for a definitive subdivision, a special permit, site plan approval, and stormwater management permit application. The special permit would be for a flexible residential subdivision. Who's 
Hold on a second, Chris. Chris, can you just say something for a second? Yep. Hello, uh, Magnolia Homes. All right, there you go. You got it. All right. I don't know what's going on, but you know, something new every night. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've caught the beginning of that, but my name is Christopher Carney. <laughs> we did yeah, tonight. Yeah. You did. Okay. Great. Um, so um, we're we're looking at Magnolia Homes plan set right now uh, at one thirty eight R Hillside Road. Uh, the property. It, I'll show you on GIS where it's located in the town of Southwick, right here. This would be lot 20. And uh, on Google Earth, um, this is the way it would appear from the street, Hillside Road. And there's an existing trail that gets to the wooded area back here, with the majority of the project taking, back, taking place in this wooded area. Um, existing conditions of the property, as noted, there's this entranceway, two existing residential homes on either side of the existing access. Uh, and then the tree line here and uh, wetland areas in the rear hatched with this wetland symbol. Also hatched would be steep slopes uh, that are not really buildable or can be considered as open space land. Uh, the topography of the land is high on Hillside Road and then simply uh, will slope down towards the wetland area. It's a pretty uniform slope as we head towards the wetland. Currently, there are no homes on the property. Uh, the proposed subdivision, as noted, was a, is a seven lot subdivision with five buildable lots uh, shown here around the cul-de-sac. And then surrounding this project would be an open space that'll create additional buffer to this land here and then remaining land uh, in the rear. Uh, we're seeking flexible residential subdivision in order to reduce the frontage requirements for these five parcels and the area requirements for these five parcels. On the face of the plan, we have generated a points list on how we have uh, earned points and how we have utilized points. The only utilization of points was the reduction of 22 foot uh, wide uh, paved area for the roadway. That'll help decrease impervious surface and decrease the development footprint further. We really appreciate this uh, opportunity to have a flexible residential subdivision because it does allow the town to have uh, open space as well as uh, a, a tighter, more clustered residential neighborhood feel. Uh, got a couple note pages, uh, but let's skip ahead to the grading and erosion control. As noted, the existing property uh, starts at Hillside Road and slopes down towards the wetland area in the rear. So we're really going to try to follow the natural terrain and have the road slope downhill towards the cul-de-sac. Uh, we had to maintain a maximum grade here, which you'll see, that, see here. And that results in the cul-de-sac being ele elevated above existing grade with these contours uh, showing one foot contours. Uh, we're schematically showing homes on each lot, as well as driveways on each lot, but these aren't going to be final location for the homes. They're really used for stormwater purposes, so we can model impervious area in order to size this drainage basin and rear appropriately. Uh, we show homes at 3,000 square feet of a footprint, so sizable homes with a sizable driveway. Uh, also on this plan, you can see uh, some tree plantings uh, around the edge. Uh, of course, we've also included a 50-foot buffer strip for all the areas next to uh, existing residential properties. That'll keep the development uh, and neighbors, you know, reduce impacts to the neighbors. Additionally, we show some uh, white pines within that buffer in order to limit the visual impact. Uh, stormwater would be collected in catch basins here and here, and then travel down into the back. Uh, it will travel along this easement area. This is a drainage easement, and it will also serve as an open space easement so that anyone uh, at the cul-de-sac can travel down this easement and enter the open space that surrounds the project. Uh, this, this is the profile of this project. Uh, we don't show contours on this, but there's a, a, a bit more information about the types of plantings around the road, as well as the profile showing the vertical curves 
uh, and structure locations. Of course, it's been designed to the standards required by the town. Uh, we've also shown blow-ups of a lot of the points of interest, some of the more complicated aspects of the project, being the intersection with Hillside Road, the Magnolia Circle cul-de-sac area, and then a blow-up of the detention basin. It's, it's an infiltration basin, uh, so water will enter this and then flow into the ground and enter the wetland area. Of course, before it enters this, it will be treated for water quality. Uh, there are no existing water lines or uh, sanitary sewer lines at this site, so uh, each lot will be served by a on-site septic system and an on-site well. Uh, the last few sheets are detail sheets. Uh, which I don't think it's really practical to go over for this meeting. Uh, as part of this submittal package, we were able to provide a stormwater drainage report. Uh, this is a pretty lengthy report. We won't go through it, but it does house all the calculations for stormwater. Uh, and after submittal, we have received comments from the town uh, from a variety of different departments. No revisions have been made to this plan set. Yet, I'd like to speak with you tonight and uh, understand these comments thoroughly before we make the revisions to the plans. But um, we've received comments from Randy Brown at the DPW, uh, from Mr. Goddard over at Planning, uh, from Tom Fitzgerald over at Board of Health, and from uh, Russ Anderson from FIRE. I'd be happy to go through those comments individually if you'd like, but I'll wait for the request. So I think that's going to conclude my presentation for this project, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. All right. Um, well, let me first ask if any board members have any questions before I read in the comments from the other departments. I was trying to find uh, in the subdivision chapter the maximum length of the dead end road. Do we know what that is? It was 800 feet. 800? 800. Okay. Was it 800, John? And this is 449, so it's under the threshold. The only other question related to the roadway, uh, is there any plan to extend a road off of this cul-de-sac? No, this will remain a dead-end cul-de-sac serving just the five lots. Okay. Thank There's you. no land to here, soon. Yeah, they can't go through the wetland. Yes, you could. Well, I shouldn't say that can't. <laughs> that would be it could a, very well. Would be a bigger the issue. bylaw requires that. Would the remaining the land for NAK Rudy be coming off a different piece of property? Correct. He owns additional land to the south with additional access to the south, so it won't become a landlocked piece. This parcel come off is Stair Drive, it come off Stair Drive, someplace like that. What was that? So would that piece come off a of Sterrett Drive? Um, the future use of this property is still unknown, uh, but it's not really a, a functional buildable area due to the wetlands. Okay. Seems to me that he, that he purchased the property next to the uh, Pioneer Valley live steamers. I'm not aware of any purchases. There, there was an access off a hillside through that property. At one time, this was a loop. Was a loop yes, one time. Yep. A yep. yep. <clears throat> All right. Any uh, other questions? Back from board members? Kids, More of a town, I think. Yep. There's a buffer of white pines on the south side there. I think we were thinking that white pines were not so good right, due to their density of snapping of wind. I don't know what, what yeah, an, an evergreen, was. a spruce species evergreen is is much superior to white pine. White pine breaks yeah. and it gets weevilled in, in the leader, so they become very bushy. Okay. We can change those points. <laughs> yeah, spruce, uh, white spruce, blue spruce, they're fairly durable. Any other Great. comments from board members? All right. Let me just run through the comments that we've received so far. Um, and Chris, I think you have all of these, it seems like, uh, but just so we have them on the record. Um, 
Police and building. Except police and building, but I, those are pretty straightforward. Yes. Uh, because the police has, um, police have no input uh, as point and building has no questions. So that's simple enough. Um, last um, uh, board of health um, I reviewed the proposed subdivision plans for the Magnolia Home subdivision, subdivision owned by NEK Realty LP and submitted by Arlebeck Associates and has some comments. It appears that some of the perk tests and or deep hole excavations conducted and shown on C3 uh, are too close to the building envelope on all five proposed lots. This assumes that the building envelope locations are to remain as depicted. Uh, if so, then several new perk tests and or deep hole excavations would be required. In addition, since the town of Southwick does not provide water service to Hillside Road, private wells would be required. Some well setback distances could potentially fall within the 100 foot buffer, depending on where additional perk tests slash deep poles are located. Uh, please feel free to contact Nisha to require additional information or questions. Tom Fitzgerald, uh, Interim Health Director. Yeah, so those are great oh. comments. As noted, they are schematic house locations. There is room on the last to place a well in the front yard areas and septic systems are probably in the rear. Uh, and the house shape and location may change in order to allow uh, septics over the existing perk tests. In the event that they're not sufficient, uh, additional perks would be required. All right, uh, fire departments. I reviewed the plans dated March 31st, 2022 and had the following requirements. Uh, this plan appears to be a portion or redesign of a plan previously reviewed in 2019. This new plan, as with previous plans, is in a non-hydrant area with the closest fire hydrant located in Westfield over two miles away. Fire protection for these homes is a serious concern requiring substantial fire flows. Our concerns are also access. The current plan C5 shows a scale of one inch to 20 inches section p1 shows one inch to 50 feet uh, i would assume this is a mistake but this needs to be clarified as it affects radius turns and roadway access additionally what are plans for future projects that may be associated with this development uh, fire protection requirements as with previous plans the remote location and substantial fire flow needed we will be requiring one water cistern to be located on the property to be utilized for fire protection the connection location should be central to the to a typical arrival. Uh, and then fire protection option. As an option to the system requirement, we would entertain an option requiring homes to be installed with fire, residential fire sprinklers as a means of fire protection prior to occupancy permit being issued. This option would waive the system requirement. I'm available to talk about any of these included options at this time. Sincerely, Russ Anderson, Fire Chief. I, yeah, I think the cistern uh, is going to be the approach we'll take. I, I understand it's required for anything with more than three lots. Uh, location of the hydrant, because the road is so short, the hydrant could be placed here and uh, meet the requirements for fire department. But we'd likely place the hydrant in this general area, or cistern and hydrant in this area. It could serve existing residential homes as well as these five homes. Uh, the scales of the plans are shown correctly. They're just uh, different scales. Uh, I think in interior sprinkler systems for this subdivision uh, don't really make sense just because there's no water out there and to feed a sprinkler system with a well is uh, not ideal. So we're is there happy a to ask- specification on the size of the cistern gallonage? Absolutely. He, uh, your fire chief has provided uh, many design requirements for the cistern. It's uh, listed as 38,000 usable gallons required. And show again where you're putting it on the site. Um, I mean, we're happy to take comments from fire department and where they think it's best. Uh, we don't really want to use the frontage of these lots. So I think this area would make sense. Will, or if it, it's more helpful to have it near the street to service more homes, that's possible. They want the cisterns to be 1,500 feet 
away from the lots at, at a maximum. Uh, and this roadway is 400 feet long. So all of these homes are well within that 1500 foot radius. All right. Um, uh, EPW. Um, EPW reviewed the plans and applications um, dated 32422 and has the following comments. One, the applicant shall provide a third party inspector to monitor construction and provide inspection reports to the town in accordance with section 315 10 1B. Two, the applicant shall deposit funds for sidewalks not installed on one side of the road into the sidewalk revolving account. The amount shall be to be determined. Three, a dedicated location to push and pile snow should be provided and shown at the end of the cul-de-sac. Four, water collected from roof leaders should be shown and should be either infiltrated or connected to the new stormwater system. Five, drainage easements shall remain open and accessible at all times. No structures, gates, plantings, or other obstacles shall be permitted within the easement. Six, all the proposed trees to be planted along both sides of the street shall be planted as far away as possible from the front lot line. EPW is concerned about the tree roots expanding and heaving the proposed sidewalks. Seven, the stormwater report was developed based on a prior bylaw and regulations, not the new bylaw and regulations. What did, what did we decide on that? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, with updated requirements for design storms, total suspended solids, removal of phosphorus, removal of nitrogen removal, et cetera. A uh, copy of the new regulations are attached to the plan and storm water report should be updated using these standards. Uh, eight, the applicant should clarify how the 25 uh, foot wide access easement to the open space will be delineated. Further, will this open space be open to use by the public or just the homeowners in the subdivision? Uh, nine, DPW is concerned about the slope of several proposed driveways, in particular lots one, two, and three. The proposed slopes are in the range of 33%. Uh, percent. These driveways do not meet the standards of the driveway bylaws or state a goal of a max 2% slope for the first 25 feet of the driveway. <coughs> EPW might be able to work with the applicant on relaxing the 2% slope requirement, but a 33% slope is excessive. Uh, 10, the infiltration basin, as well as the piping from the street to the basin, the should be owned and maintained by the homeowner association. 11, reinforced concrete sidewalk section detail. Uh, materials and workmanship for sidewalks shall meet mass DOT standards. The applicant can consider using fiberglass reinforcement as opposed to wire mesh as shown. Also, applicants shall apply a sealant to retard moisture evaporation and protect against salt damage. 12, pre-cast pre -cast concrete catch basin detail, uh, CT style detail. These catch basin structures should be round, further the grade should be galvanized. Um, all right, uh, anything you want to discuss about that, Chris? I know you're, you're going to take time to respond to those and adjust as necessary, but anything you want to talk about now? Yeah, I, I reviewed these comments and generally we're going to uh, conform to all these requests and, and requirements. Uh, the only sticky situation would be the build out of the lots. We don't know where the final houses will be placed, where driveways are practical uh, for a house design and how much fill is gonna be required for different architectural plans. So we, we show a subdivision uh, with the road built correctly. Uh, each lot owner will be responsible to grade their lots and conform uh, to setbacks for the buildings and for grades for the driveways. Uh, so while these driveways aren't conforming now, they will be brought into conformance at the build out of the lots. Uh, other than that, the schematic layout of the properties, we're happy to conform to all of uh, Randy's comments. I think they're, they're good comments. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have, at least from my point of view, think about the driveway issue only sort of pressure in my head because I've gone out with Rob to Depot Square and, you know, tape measure and measured grades over at some of those driveways, which are absurd. Um, so, um, you know, it's certainly an issue, especially I don't, is that to the extent that the sidewalk is, is there a sidewalk going through any of it? Um, right, yeah, so you're gonna have a sidewalk, which, you know, you're gonna have to adjust the grade on as well. Um, so, I just think because that was the issue over at Depot Square too, is that we had to 
get rid of the sidewalk in some locations because of the existing conditions. It looks like the sidewalk ends at the uh, right of way or the easement mm -hmm. going down. And that's down fine, but you thing. still have two homes that are so going to have a it ends way. right there. It has to deal with that. So it's not, it, we can, I'm sure we could figure it out, but it's just something that I don't want to get. And if this wasn't, this was, a, I think, more of an execution than a plan issue um, with Depot Square, but in Depot Square, we had to deal with that issue. And so it's a little bit fresh in my mind. I should end. Um, all right, any uh, board questions or comments? On, on the infiltration basin, is there any fencing plan to round that or it's not uh, deep enough to be concerned? Yeah, uh, it's three feet deep. So I would say that's not a, a great concern with gentle slopes going into it. So uh, four feet deep to the top of this berm here, but generally a functional three feet of depth before it spills over. Uh, Due to the location, I don't think uh, people would be traveling in this area. So no fence is proposed. Why does the sidewalk stop after the first two houses? Why doesn't it continue to the other homes? Uh, partially due to the grading of the property uh, and that wet, when this sidewalk is continued around, there will need to be some coordination with these driveways. Uh, but really it's Due to the amount of homes on this, five homes, I think walking from a house uh, to this um, access area, we're, we're not anticipating any traffic issues um, for the amount of cars on this cul-de-sac. It's really to serve from Hillside Avenue down to the open space. Any other uh, board questions? Not yet. <laughs> All right, um, any town officials have any questions? Come in. Mr. Goddard. Chris, uh, I think we've got some buffer zone work for, let's see, some of the back uh, grading and that uh, drainage uh, easement and access. Uh, what's the, uh, I guess, what's the path for conservation and uh, timeline looking like? Um, we have submitted an NOI and, and we're going, uh, I'm going with conservation. I don't think there have been any meetings for this project yet. Okay. Um, and I would just note, um, given some of the grading at the site, I, I think in one of your uh, exchanges, you mentioned that uh, lots, uh, three and, two and three are probably going to be walkouts. Um, and so I know that alleviates some of the concern, uh, but I'm observing that the Infiltration basin is going to be down gradient from an area that'll be disturbed for a period of time. Um, I know that house lots are managed separate from the overall subdivision, but it might be appropriate uh, to either provide notation on the plan um, for an up gradient silt fence um, from that basin and to that uh, limit of clearing something that uh, would be implemented at the time of uh, uh, construction activity at that site. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense to put a, a silt fence to block any construction on the lot. Uh, as noted before, we do have some points from that flexible residential subdivision. Some of those points could be used to further reduce the front setback that would bring these homes closer and limit the amount of fill. Uh, that's something we'll probably consider for this next revision. And I'm happy to discuss with you, John. Thanks, Chris. That's it. Okay. Um, any other town officials have any comments? All right, any um, members of the public have any comments or questions? We can start by people in person. Um, I do, if possible. It's Melissa Wojak. Oh. I'm at 138 Hillside. Um, it's for Chris. Um, could you quickly just explain to me again, and I apologize if I missed it in your presentation, with the road that's going to be developed, um, there's going to be a sidewalk, and will there also be trees? Yes, yep, trees would be planted here uh, between okay. the sidewalk and this property here. Is this you at 130? Yeah, that's me, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yes. All right, correct. okay, thank you. And also, um, I'm not sure if I was misinterpreting, but I thought we had something that said seven homes, not just five. Correct. And it's is seven that, will lots. that be connecting into Englehart's property that's a couple 
houses down from us. Is that where it would be? I didn't see any plans for the other two. Yeah, so it's a seven lot subdivision, but only five homes would be okay. built on it. Okay. The open space would count as a parcel and then remaining land counts as a parcel, but none of those would be developed with the home. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Mike, did you... Yeah. Cover was in five versus seven. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moglin. Chairman Dowdy, thank you. Doug Moglin, five hidden place, <clears throat> uh, member of the select board. Um, just looking at the plan, you were right to raise Depot Square as a, a, a shining example of how not to construct a subdivision over there. And I actually had a conversation with Rob Levesque that, you know, his name's on the plan as the engineer. And, you know, there were ramifications to the fact that that wasn't built as design. So when you, and we also saw that at the Greens uh, subdivision where they sold some of the lots and the developers of the lots didn't build according to the grading plan, which resulted in significant runoff issues at the end of one of the roads and the town would have been in no position to take the road from the developer at the conclusion of construction. So I, I just would put out there to caution the developer and RLA of those concerns. So if they're having a, another entity grade those lots to get the driveways right or whatever, that they should show those grades on the lots. And um, because eventually they're gonna wanna have Magnolia Circle or whatever it's gonna be named taken by the town as an accepted way. And the drainage structures and stuff is designed to accept water in a certain amount from a certain direction. And if that's changed by a contractor, that's no business of the planning board or the town. So it's just something to keep in mind as this moves along. That's a very good comment. Um, I, I think that Randy Brown is also has the same sort of concerns as far as construction goes. And that's why one of his comments is to have a third party inspector monitor construction throughout this process. So hopefully that would help uh, make sure this site is constructed in accordance with these plans. And, and sorry, but net net, at the end of the day, the, the, the town or the planning board grants a special permit to the entity that is applied. So it doesn't matter a hill of beans if that applicant sells a lot off and then they can't throw up their hands and go, well, I sold a lot, that's that guy's problem if he's dumping water in the street or there's some other issue where they crack a sidewalk or whatever, the town through the bond or whatever is gonna come back at the developer of the subdivision and the, you know, the signatory to the, to the plan as the responsible party. And it's always an uncomfortable conversation, so better to have it now than later. Yeah, we're happy to have that conversation as well. And we want these homes to be built appropriately and according to these plans. We're just stuck in a spot where uh, there will be fill required. And due to the cost of fill, it, it's not gonna be practical for the developer to truck in fill that may need to be removed depending on different architectural plans and layouts of the properties. Some may want to walk out basement. Some may not want to walk out basement. So the amount of fill brought in would be dependent on those final plans. We will need to work closely with them. I understand those other projects had some issues, but looking at this one individually, uh, the way the stormwater management system is set up, uh, I don't think we're going to have the same issues. I'm pretty confident we, we won't. And that's just because of the way the topography slopes. It starts at Hillside Road and it runs pretty steeply to this wetland area. We're gonna collect just the areas in the front in this. And we assume that uh, runoff in the yard areas will just flow down the, the terrain uh, towards this back area, toward, towards the detention basin. Uh, and, and important to note is that we do write this stormwater report, which has a lot of the technical details that uh, a contractor would need. It's gonna be really important for us to coordinate um, with each builder how uh, to develop a lot that has appropriate stormwater. So this 
uh, is the image showing the sub catchments for the proposed development. So because of the way it's configured, these parcels, they won't ever reach the detention basin. So grading for these parcels will not be important when where stormwater discharges for these will not be important. Uh, and these homes all will either enter the system or they'll flow downhill and enter here, uh, sheet flow over the surface and enter here. So because of the topography of this project, I really don't anticipate issues with stormwater discharge. Um, any other public comments? No. Thank you, and Jody, 8258 Hills Road, and also Board of Summer Corners. I don't look at the map. My only concern, and you guys probably see better than I do, the open space, there's no sidewalks going through open space in the past. We've had some developments go in, and the sidewalk went through open space, and then the town has to run their equipment halfway across the town to follow that sidewalk. Because now it's the town sidewalk with the open space scenario. But I think it's all towards the back, right? All the open space. There's nothing up front. You know what I mean? Correct. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Okay. So that's my only concern. Uh, yeah, it's all, it's all in the back. It's all in the back. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments? All right. Um, I didn't write it down. Uh, where do we stand with conservation? Chris, I'm sorry. Still, you said it. Yeah, we're, a notice of intent has been filed and, and we'll need to, it hasn't been approved. Okay. Um, so our next meeting is May 24th. Um, And we could certainly put it on for May 24th if that's uh, enough time for you to make whatever changes need to be made uh, based on the comments. Um, though, you know, keep in mind that we're not going to finally approve anything if we do approve it uh, before conservation, just so that we're not doing two different plans. So uh, we're going to wait till conservation at a minimum um, before we voted on anything. So um, with that caveat, um, do you want to move it to the 24th or are you looking further than that? Uh, the 24th would be great. We'll definitely have a meeting with conservation in between now and then, and we'll have a better feel for the project. Uh, if we're anticipating more meetings with conservation, uh, we'll coordinate with John and request a continuance to the next meeting. Okay. Um, we have anything on for that? Oh, uh, we have... Um... Yeah, I'm sorry. Number two is, uh, Stormwater. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I should know that by now. It's good. We, will, um, we haven't assigned a time yet, but we'll also have, we also have one of them. That's a seven time. Yeah, that was one point one time. Two, seven, three, nine, five, five, five. Yeah, why don't we put, why don't we put this on for seven fifteen? Mm. Yep. Uh, do I have a motion to continue um, the hearing on 138R Hillside Road to 715 on May 24th? Marcus Phelps, so moved. Richard Hutzinger, second. I'll do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Hutzinger, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Jessica Thornton, aye. Okay. John's 24th. Mm -hmm. 24th, yes. 715. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right. Yeah. And ours. <clears throat> White Street. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, everyone. Attorney Brad Moyers, and representing Mr. Ronald Ludor. You squish in the York Cup in the past. I know that's precious territory. Oh, <laughs> um, that's okay. That's right. Um, and as related to uh, a portion of land that lies across from Mr. Lewis' property, 
um, at White Street. The proposal that is being advanced is for uh, Mr. Ludorf to purchase um, this particular portion of the property uh, from the Congamon Heights Association. Um, as essentially we're at the terminus of White Street uh, and what we see there highlighted on the plan is not land that um, was originally made this plot, if you will, on the subdivision plan. Essentially that, that the land peters out on the original plan. But he has been maintained for a number of years. Uh, so through coordination uh, with town council, uh, they've arrived at what they're hoping to be the most convenient solution. Um, for him to, uh, to acquire this property. Um, so that is uh, a matter that is before the town for the Reno uh, Town meeting uh, for a vote. That's the simpler solution. The other one has, if that doesn't uh, move forward, essentially uh, Attorney Moyer's task is to um, obtain to go a release of interest from all the uh, involved parties, I suppose, in the Congress Heights. Uh, development. Um, so uh, a, a more uh, costly and painful process. But nonetheless, from an AR perspective, uh, this is not a buildable lot. This is simply a plan that uh, establishes land that uh, will theoretically be transferred. It's plain land for ownership. Nothing to be built on. Yep. Uh, so from an, a, from an AR consideration standpoint, there's um, not a whole lot for the board consider. There's, no concern. It does have access. It does have frontage, but it's not uh, intended to be a built for. So it doesn't have the minimum frontage That's requirements. Right. Because it's not a built for. Yeah. That's this is just a mechanism for this to be uh, a recordable. Uh, tool it, it doesn't even have a minimum tree. <laughs> and it doesn't tie into resistance piece that'll make it a little bit lot. No. So where this ends uh, at White Street um, is. Right at the DPW turnaround at uh, that gravel wedge right there. So, this is the rest of the property. That's right. So, all of this is, if you will, a portion of Congamon Heights Association. Um, although, right away, Jewel is designated with those solid lines. So, what's here? Lake. This is the lake. So, where is the owner? Where will the owner of this property reside? Lives there across the street. Yeah, Mr. Ludorf, across the street, has been utilizing yeah, this property for whatever uh, <laughs> many yeah, years. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. is just a, yeah. say, a mechanism to formalize that water access. Mm -hmm. Yes, that occupancy. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions or comments? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Do I hear a motion to endorse the plan as not requiring approval? Marcus Phelps, so moved. Richard right. Russinger, second. For roll call vote, Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Russinger, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave, aye. Okay. How many trees did you cut down this week? It wasn't me. Okay. Are we here? Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, next trick. The next day in our, we're going over to uh, Mount Loomis uh, at the Constance Keller, Constance Keller uh, property. So this is a pretty spectacular uh, survey. So if I can make a little space over right. here, I'll have a great opportunity to just mash my setup, but if these two plans, if we will match, mm -hmm. uh, meet uh, together, although if you will, the bulk of the business is on that, that southeasterly portion. So where is the concrete plant? I'm sorry? Where's the concrete plant? Is Kelly Brothers, is that it on this drawing? I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that specific location. No. Yeah, it does it have a Quonset hut? Yeah, my my uh, garage would be at least. Okay. Quonset hut. Yeah. Okay, so 
What I see uh, iterated on this plan is uh, a number of transfers to abutting landowners um, as broken down uh, in these notes. So is that right? Uh, that's right. So give or take, we'll find that little access yeah, road right there. Okay. And then we see the rest. So we have a portion that's going to the uh, Antigo uh, property. Let's see, is that um, up to down here? So E4, this acreage, and that's the Antigo uh, property right there. E5, let's See, I'm sorry, there's E5, and that's to be combined with adjacent property of, gosh. Thank you, for, thank you. I'm not doing very well upside down today. What was that? What's the name? Raymond Mitchell. Where's the piece of the, that the Hodges is wanting to build on? This side of the road. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 gotcha. Right back. Okay, I'm with you. Yep. So the mother's that's north. So I mean, Justin's house would be west. Where? So I mean, Justin's house would be. I don't know. I mean, I mean, Kellen's house would be where? She was on the other side of the road. Uh huh. The teacher. Way up there. There's the road going. Is this through here? Yeah. I've seen road. It's pretty spectacular. Mm. Like. I, Okay, so the do all area. the lots end up with the required acreage and frontage? Well, they are being required. They are being uh, combined with adjacent. Yeah. Um, so, acreage. so so after the combination, they all still come out. To that's be correct. Legal lots. That's right. Okay. And so because it's referenced, Constance Kellogg who's here. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because herself, sure. yeah. who has yeah. enough acreage and, and frontage. frontage. Yep. The remaining. Okay. So that's Seth's wife. So that's constant. That's her. Wow. So parcel E3 is going to which? Parcel E3 is a frontage. Or I that should say, I'm sorry, sorry, it has a yeah. cottage on mm -hmm. Wow. All right. What's so the frontage? Is this all going to stay here? This concrete <laughs> drive? Really get there. <laughs> I'm sorry? Now, this, these, this is going to be separate. There's, a, there's this concrete driveway that services both. So now that's going to become a, a uh, that word. Yeah, common. Thank you. Actually, the house here, they actually have a driveway. Well, right so the question is that you're going to need an easement. Mm -hmm. And also, get some of this part. Access to the... There's no house there. Well, right, you know, it doesn't matter because we just have to put the driveway somewhere else. You want you have access. That's all we care about. Yeah, they they could physically get there. There's nothing impeding. Correct. I mean, they're they're, they're south of Shirtliff Brook, so yeah. they're not crossing any kind of. This uh, is where Seth Kelly right. lived, right there. I have no idea. Yeah, conservation. Or... 1960 something. Mm -hmm. I didn't get here in '95, buddy. As long as they're legal mm -hmm. lots after it's all just passed away, well, like, changed. Three years ago. There's a conservation or something. Yeah, as well, they had a house back yeah, in here. Where Mr. Smith used to live. Well, when did Mr. Smith right, die? Um, 1948. Right, so E4 is combined that. with what? E4, E4, E4 is, is the one that goes to the, I'm sorry. E4 was the Antico uh, property. Mm -hmm. E5 was to Mitchell. Mm -hmm. E6 goes to, where did I see that? I'm, I'm right spinning around. Thank you very much. Well, you weren't kidding. This is going to be fun to follow. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Hey, you could be a surveyor. <laughs> Appreciate the hard work it went into making sure this was all. Yeah, really, it's pretty impressive. Laid out. Gotta say. Oh, and Mike, I'm sorry, I didn't. So that's 200 feet of frontage that's established mm -hmm. within that E3 um, lot net okay. associated with that cottage. Yeah, I was trying to quickly do the math. And I, and I, yeah, I wasn't sure it was covered up. No, no, I appreciate that. So is there's there's E3, E4, E5, E6. Is there E1 and 2? Yeah, the private is a card in the ammo. Not that I've seen. Okay. <laughs> e6 is sitting at the barracks watching TV. The E5 is wondering what E2 and E3 oh, are yeah. doing. <laughs> Any questions on the board? Another <sighs> grand reservoir. What the hell's back there? 
Because they're all teaching in Irene Keller, his mother. Do I hear a motion to endorse the plan that's not requiring approval? Marcus Phelps, so moved. Do I hear a second? Dick Utzinger, second. The roll call vote, Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Dick Utzinger, aye. David Sutton, aye. David Sutton, aye. Right. We'll uh, lay these out at the end of the yeah. meeting. Yeah. At least two or three of them are going to sit around for the next hour discussing the people who lived on these properties for the last 100 years. So we uh, got plenty of time. Good old look at the food. No. Um, he's a tough old bird. But yeah, his son's got to lock up, so let's make sure he doesn't. Hey, uh, <laughs> Dave's got I'm the lock, key. I'm locking you in. You got the key, Dave. Remember, uh, I got that picture. Discussion. No one's deep cross it. Request for release for remaining laws of government. Lou of Bond uh, posting a performance bond for remaining work. Um, okay. We're still not quite to the finish line, as, if I'm understanding the email correctly, but I may not. That's that is correct. So following the last meeting, uh, we received comments uh, from town council. Passed those along to uh, Salt Marsh uh, Industries. They did provide a revised uh, bond to the town clerk and provided us with a copy. Um, a couple, as I mentioned, that the form is really here to be the we'll call it an owner and a contractor relationship, not a developer and a town. So it's required a fair amount of uh, tweaking. A couple of uh, adjustments were a little off point. So uh, this time around, town council has provided, I'm going to call it point by point, uh, let's take me out of the middle there, right? Uh, of uh, provisions that they're requesting uh, to that bond form uh, to be implemented. So revisions to the revision? Revisions to the revision. That's a uh, lack of revision. Uh, yeah, in some places, yes. Oh, okay. So let's pick it off. Right? If, uh, well, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable doing anything until I sign off on it. So. Can you work from Randy on that? Randy, uh, fine. He, was he, okay. he was really focused on what we call the value yeah. um, of it. So at this point, it comes down to format. Um, I will share that there's a um, a developer that's excuse me a home builder uh, that is particularly concerned about uh, the timeline. Um, so that's by recognizing there are changes yet to be. Yeah, no, I'm not signing anything. So I'm confident it's okay. So uh, uh, I just happened to turn over and. Mr. Gibson is here this evening. Um, that's everything in your position. Sean Gibson uh, is the uh, developer that I reached out oh, okay. with some specific concerns. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, um, I, I just, who needs to sign it? So the signature would uh, wind up being on the similar release form to what we did for lot 16 out there. Right. The bond itself is signed by uh, Mr. Saltmarsh on behalf of uh, the corporations and uh, the, the surety company, the agent. We haven't voted on it. That is correct. We were waiting to vote until we got the, the language set. That's correct. Um, and then, all right, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to pull up the actual bond. Yeah, right there. I just, Hold on, I get it. Okay. 
just going to follow up on this. Did that happen? Hmm. Which one? That's one. Was in your folder? What folder? I didn't have anything in your folders. What are you guys looking for? The uh, disc golf course. That's our yeah. new. Kind of yeah. I think that's all stuff that you weren't here. Because you guys aren't here in person. Take that in your folder. I didn't know if you one. That's why you have it. And you don't get. You want to change that. But um, I thought that was tabled until this meeting to actually sign it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I've misread the recording of the meeting. All right, so I mean, I don't. Yeah. I'll just mention that uh, an attorney, uh, Dana Goldman, did submit the request, uh, copy of the previous uh, release, um, original bond. Uh, we don't yet have about the release document. Although. Thank you very much. I think you got it. I appreciate it. Um, I present to you with all the same format as the one that was reviewed. I got the answer for last. So here's my feeling on this. We have pretty close to final version of this bond. There are some suggestions by um, Mark Feglain. Um, I'm not going to say that they're not substantive. They are. I mean, adding the original developer is certainly a, a substantive one. Um, so there's certainly changes to be made, but I don't really have a problem voting to um, to agree to um, release the covenant in a form similar to the one that we did for lot 16 mm -hmm. and impose this bond in a form that is acceptable to town council mm -hmm. um, and, and leave it at that. I, I don't have an issue with that, um, especially since we're nearing the finish line. That's how I can tell. Um, unless you think that. No, but I, I imagine, in fact, we, although we expect the form for the release to be uh, the same as was reviewed by town council for lot 16. I imagine we've done both documents. Um, who asked that? them to be to the satisfaction. Who signed lot 16 release? Just me, or was it the entire? Thing? It was it was just you. Oh. you right there. So, um, <laughs> I have no problem entertaining a motion. Let's split it up. Um, a motion to accept. Um, as security, the bond performance bond from uh, ENC Insurance Companies, um, which may be modified um, small ways 
um, to the to the satisfaction of town council. Six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand dollars, and I, I can pass this around if you guys want to see. That's the latest version. Um, and here are the comments from Mr. Beglane, if anybody hasn't seen them. But um, so I don't have a problem at least getting that done, and then you don't have we don't have to wait for a month um, to do the vote. It's just a matter of getting Mark to sign off on it and. I can sign the release of covenant, so I mean, it's the same form as the last one, which I can't imagine why it wouldn't be because that's been approved by both sides. So, um, anybody have any issue with that? Should we do a separate vote to authorize you to sign it? Uh, you said you want to split it in two. Uh, I was going to do it to accept the bond and release the covenant, um, but we can put that in the release covenant. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if we need that or not. Um, um, so does anybody have a, uh, do I hear a motion to uh, accept the performance bond in the amount of $600,000 uh, with the, the from the it EMC insurance? C. Mm -hmm. EMC. Um, you know, with the specific language to be worked out by town council. Marcus Phelps so moved. Mr. Justin, second. Do a roll call vote, Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Mr. Justin, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Okay. Um, and do I hear a motion to, uh, once the performance bond is uh, fully complete and um, that's the right term let's call it legally active uh, filed with the town and executed um, to allow for the release of the present filed covenant that is um, a new bond that is on the property Marcus Phelps so moved Richard, I'll take a second. Uh, do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard, I'll take a aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Okay. Uh, and do I hear motion um, to authorize me to sign the release of covenant in the Lebanon, um, uh that would be in the same form as the previous? Release of covenant for lot 16. Marcus Phelps, so move. Richard Singer, second. Roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. All right. So I'm sorry. I, I didn't, what's your name, sir? I'm Sean Anderson. Okay. Um, um, my suggestion, um, if you're talking to uh, Jesse or whoever over there, um, you know, we're sort of waiting on them to finalize documents um, per the per the suggestions of town council. Um, and so if they can do that, um, things will get done quicker. So um, if you want to talk to them about getting that moving, that'll get things released quicker and you can move forward faster, okay? Does it mean it doesn't have to go to that it, it's, it doesn't have to go to the next meeting, but whether it gets done before then is totally dependent on uh, Jesse and those folks. So, okay. Yep. All right. Um, routine business. Master Plan Advisory Committee update. Mr. Phelps. Okay. Master Plan Advisory Committee is moving along. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, have a community survey go out the middle of May, and uh, it will close on June 30th. And uh, we hope to get a good participation from members of the public. Uh, it will be primarily online, but we will have hard copies available if people need a hard copy for uh, to complete. And that'll be primarily coordinated through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Our next meeting is May 5th. 
That'll be an important meeting because we'll be approving the final survey questions and also the information materials that are being developed for the master plan. We'll have a brochure on that. We did participate, had a table at the art show with this handout, which was prepared for the art show. And it summarizes what a master plan does. Uh, we have a mascot that was designed by uh, someone, Mr. McWilliams' son, <laughs> and it's called Jog. It's in the shape of Southwick. So that's our mascot. Uh, anyway, this is just a uh, overview of a master plan that uh, gives people an idea. The, uh, the term we're using is Southwick 2040 creating our future. So that's, you're going to see that a lot as we move forward. So we're looking out to 2040 and see what is out, is going to be happening in Southwood. We're going to have a, uh, hopefully a website and a Facebook page as we uh, continue to interact with the public. So okay. plenty going on. Um, <laughs> Short-term rental subcommittee update. Uh, we haven't met. We're supposed to meet next week. I know we've all submitted questions. We want to get answered and just thoughts. And, but our meetings got postponed a couple of times. So conflict of interest on meetings. Okay. So it's working. It's coming slow. But it's fine. All right. Minutes approved. I haven't seen minutes well. Mm -hmm. Now I was hoping to blast us some over vacation. They're about there, but yeah, they're pending on that tan. So I sit there with my reflection. We'll get uh, a bunch out, everyone. Grace for um, a, a busy sort of reading. Fantastic. That'll keep me awake. Can I wait for the movie to come out? All right, Mr. Sutton, <laughs> Town Beach parking plan. I have to run around the other side of the table. Yes, you're walking, huh? So John give me a copy of the plans. We, we delineated where it's going to be. And we're, we're good to go. Fantastic. I'm by the lake, right? All right. I'm by the lake. Down by the lake. Let's go to the right of the water. Bond discussion, the ranch estates. Um, so we will put this on for a public hearing for the 24th um, to uh, discuss potentially putting in a new. Um, surety for road completion up there. Um, John will work with town council to get the notice together. Um, Randy will offer his comments on a potential bond amount. Town council will also send it to um, the parties in the current litigation. So it'll be the developers, um, Home Association, Mr. Pappas, if there's anyone else in litigation, but whoever's in it, they'll get notice of it so they can offer their thoughts on the bond, which I'm assuming the answer will be we don't want one. Um, but it was the developers. Uh, so we'll get all that information and then have the public hearing on the 24th. What time? Um, so we'll have three public hearings at that meeting. Yeah, but this is, I mean, um, one, the, seven, the one that's on 715 right now is a continuation of the public hearing. We've already gotten the bulk of the, you know, presentation. There's not going to be a ton, I don't think, um, the hillside. Mm -hmm. And then this public hearing is not going to be a lengthy public hearing to talk about a bond amount. I can't imagine. I'm also not going to be there. So my my care about it is a little bit less. Just kidding. No, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and so we'll put 141 on last. Um, 141, 141 on Condamon Road would be the last of the sequence. Okay. Um, that was my plan. And so why don't we put this for um, 8.30? No, 8 o'clock? Um, oh, no, this one's before. Okay. Yeah. So 7.30. This one will go. Easily. So my inclination is to say to put it at... Um, Well, if we're really going to have a whole bunch of minutes, um, 
maybe put it at like <laughs> seven, no problem. seven twenty-five. Yeah. Just in case that seven fifteen doesn't go, or there's not, it, 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 it's not going to be substantive at all. I want to make sure that you're not sitting here for twenty yeah. minutes. Well, do, we'll do uh, we'll do regular business during the time. Yeah, it's it's all, minutes. Yeah, well, it's, you know, Mike, with the length of these meetings, we're thinking about raising the rent for the planning board. Look at what. Look at where we are right now. Well, right. yeah. Usually it's quarter of 12. Um, You're lucky. Well, you raise our pay. You raise all our right. Pay. So we'll put that on for 725. We'll work with Mark Tanner and get that notice out there. Um, it's still late. It's on 141. 141 would be 141. Put it on at uh, 745. That should be fine. Probably not realistic. We don't do that time, but at least it's, it covers that. Yeah. Problem if one of us goes off. All right. Say it. Anything else? Say it. Mr. Sutton? And make a motion to close the meeting. All those in favor, say aye. Oh. Second, second, second. Yes, second. Be second. second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, well, Good job. Look at that. 8.25. You can have time for coffee. Good job. Oh, that magnificent. Good job.